many of you know because I talk about her all the time. I always say the first church I ever went to, and this is the infamous, famous, l adorable <laughs> Reverend Susie Shadle. <laughs> Thanks for being here. Thank you. Just in time. Oh. <laughs> I just have to say one thing. I'm sure she's told you that she was my poster child for Centers for Spiritual Living. Did you, did you tell no, us? So I, oh. no. <laughs> okay, uh, well, now we know. Quick story. I get a phone call, and this woman on the other end of the line says, I noticed you're having a membership class on Sunday. Is there any other time? First of all, she said, could I come? And I'm like, who are you? She's thinking with the bubble ahead over her head. And I thought, well, sure, you can come. And she says, well, are you going to do that class any other time besides Sunday? And I said, well, as a matter of fact, we'll do it on Tuesday. And she goes, oh, good. She goes, you're going to think I'm such a flake, but I have Seahawk tickets on Sunday. And I said, lady, if I had Seahawk tickets, I wouldn't even be there. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why and Centers for Spiritual Yep, that's how Centers for Spiritual Living grabbed me. <laughs> that was a perfect song. It reminded me, um, the board went on a retreat yesterday. And the facilitator of this uh, retreat, many of you probably know, Amy Castile, and she reminded us, and it is what we teach here, that if we um, look at our bodies and tell the universe what is wrong with our bodies, I have heavy thighs, I'm whatever, the universe is going to say, oh, okay, more please. If you really want to have a healthy body, you should be singing that song and only that song, and then watch your body change to align with that truth. So thank you for that. So we're talking about the 12 steps. We are on step 11. Reverend Heather already read what step 11 is, so I'm not going to reread it to you. Uh, in the 12 steps for everyone, he says, we continually sought to improve ourselves, to deepen our connection to others, to develop and grow toward our full potential in every area of our life and to do our best in whatever we agreed to do. Uh, Russell Brand, again, my favorite book on, on the steps. And again, we do not sell this book in the bookstore for reasons that if you pick up the book, you'll understand completely. And he's brilliant. He is absolutely brilliant. And I can read exactly what he said this time. Stay connected to your new perspective. And then Karen Lindsley, who is also a Science of Mind minister, wrote this nice little book. You'll notice Georgia and um, Karen's books are thin because they want you to pick them up and read them over and over and over again. And step 11 here is continue to enlarge and deepen and strengthen our connection with spirit. So the principle we're talking about is power. To own who we are is a greater... Um, as a greater envision of what source energy is, each and every one of us, every single one of us has to, at some point, I hope, open up to the truth of who we are, God in form. And when you do that, when you really realize what that means, you know, we can all say it intellectually, can't we? Every single one of us. Oh, yeah, okay, Gail says I'm God in form, so I don't know what that means. So think about source energy. Think what Ernest Holmes used to say to little kids. There is not a spot that God is not. So that which is everywhere and nowhere at the same time. That which is all things everywhere is what you are. It's the absolute truth of who you are. Do you think it was an accident, fate, or God in form that Laura found her dad. Because science created the opportunity for her to do a DNA test. So she absolutely knew without a doubt who her dad was. Now somebody could say, well, that's science. Scientists, they're God in form, are they not? So it's working in our lives all the time. And to claim that and to know that is powerful. So what is step 11 about then? It says through prayer and meditation. 
Now, if I ask you how many of you meditate, everybody's going to raise their hand because they think they're supposed to. They're in church, and we're science of mind people. So we, of course, we all meditate. I call BS. I'm just calling it like I see it because it's how I live my life. I meditate when it's convenient for me. And here's the truth. It's one of those things you should do like brushing your teeth. Hi, Vinny. You are so cute over there. Sorry, squirrel moment. Adorable little child looking at me. Um, so to remember every single day, it doesn't have to be long. You know, there is a saying that if you're busy, if you're too busy to meditate 15 minutes, then meditate for 30. Because here's the deal. It is that important. It is that important that you take that time to connect to the wisdom of the divine that is always, always, always trying to speak to you. I know there's no try. It is always speaking to you. And the problem is you are so busy with your life, you can't hear what it is saying. Now, sometimes it is saying things like, you probably don't want to do that. And you're so busy, you don't hear it. And so then the next time, it's like a little push in the back. You, you, probably, you probably don't want to do that. And you're so busy, you think, oh, wow, my back kind of hurts today. I wonder what that's about. And then you'll get the two by four. And the two by fours aren't really fun because I've been hit with them a couple times. And so the practice of meditation allows you to, to create that space where you can listen to the divine. And so Karen says, prayer and meditation, she thinks it should be, and remember Karen is the one who wrote the book, meditation and prayer. Connect first. Because as Michael Beckwith said, you're either going to be pulled by vision or you're going to be pushed by pain. How many of you have been pushed by pain? Yeah, let's raise it way up there. Wouldn't we rather be pull, push, pulled by vision? And we can't be pulled by vision if we are not listening to what God is whispering in our ears all the time. All the time. So I'm going to walk you through a simple meditation because I think it's important. And it is something that you can do every single day of your life. It doesn't take that long. Yesterday during the retreat, this is what I love about Amy. There's many things I love about Amy, so I'll rephrase this. This is one thing I love about Amy, is she does things in the grocery store. She said, like, she'll be standing there, and she'll just ask herself, am I in balance? And she'll straighten up her body. Or she'll ask her, or she, in the car, she says she'll grab the bottom of her steering wheel at a stoplight and just, you know, make herself sit up a little taller. These are little things that we can do that connect us to that which surrounds us all the time. Remember Ernest Holmes? Like Heather said, it was, it was in um, Reverend George's book that God is within us and around us. It's everywhere. And so to recognize that when you're doing all kinds of things and to give thanks all the time. If you wake up in the morning... What if you just said, thank you, God? I mean, some people will, oh, you know, say five things you're grateful for. What if you just said, thank you, God? Because you woke up. There are people on this planet that didn't get to see today. So just thank you, God. And then throughout your day to remember to give great thanks. For the people who um, are around you. Those annoying people, you know who they are. At, you know, in the grocery store, at the airport. Wherever you are, there are people that are, you know, that they are going to push up against you energetically. And what if, instead of allowing that push to push you over the edge of um, kindness... You allowed that push to just take a breath and say, well, thank you, God. I'm here in this airport and I'm traveling and so are all these other people. This is a practice 
This is something me as your minister, I will own up to. This is a practice for me because I can go uh, from me to that other person in a nanosecond. And it is remembering, take a breath, Gail. Take a breath. And so let's just practice this simple meditation. I'm going to ask you, the first step is to close your eyes. Now, there might be somebody in this room closing their eyes, they don't feel safe. And I get that. So just lower your lids so you can still see the floor and the area around you, but you're not looking out. And the reason we close our eyes is because it allows us to look within. If I am visually looking out, I can get distracted. I can get distracted by what I see. I can get distracted by Vinny. I can get uh, distracted by Bambi. You weren't here. We have a goat here, Susie. So to, um, to just close your eyes and allow yourself to really be with that presence that is the truth of who you are. And now I want you to take some deep breaths together. So a deep breath in through the nose to the count of three. One, two, three, and hold it. One, two, three, and let it out slowly through your mouth. One, two, three. One more breath in through the nose. One, two, three, hold it. One, two, three, release it through your mouth, nice and slow, sink into your chair, one, two, three, and one last deep breath in through the nose, like it's your last breath on earth, and now hold it, hold it a little bit longer, hold it for as long as you can, so you can start to feel the cells in your body, and then when you're ready, just gently open your mouth, and slowly let the breath out. This slows down all of those reactive nerves in your body, the fight and flight. This allows you to relax into this space. And so now that we've relaxed into the space, I want you to be in touch with your body. I want you to feel how your body feels in this moment. Is there some place you feel uncomfortable and you kind of want to move? Then move. Allow yourself to be comfortable. Meditation isn't about looking like a pretzel. It's about connecting to God. That is the sole purpose of meditation. Connect to God. So allow yourself to feel your body. And now because we live on this glorious planet, I want you to connect to the earth. Do that however. It dawned on me as I was thinking about this that we're always connected to the earth unless we're flying. And when we're flying, we're still connected to the earth because gravity is holding us in the air and whatever those jet engines do to keep us up there. But just to feel the earth, to know that you are part of that because we're all that same energy. And so really feel into the earth. And now take a moment to still your mind. And this sometimes is the hardest for people. So the best way to still your mind is to have a mantra. Because if your mind is focusing on a mantra, It's not going to be wondering what everybody else is doing and who's got their eyes closed and how long is this going to take. So just say to yourself, I am. Intention, attention, manifestation. I am. I am. All that God is, I am. And now we're going to take the longest journey you experience in your life. We're going to move from your head to your heart. And so the easiest way I have found to do that 
is put a hand on your heart and take a moment. Remember, we were in our bodies. Take a moment and feel your heartbeat. And just delight at the wonder of how it does that without you controlling it. You don't do anything. You're sitting here and your heart is just beating. And now I want you to think of someone who absolutely, no matter what, it can be a person, it can be an animal, it could be a flower. Think of something that you know when you think of it, absolute joy overcomes you. Because when you're in a state of absolute joy, you're in your heart. So think about that and allow yourself to be in your heart. And then the last step is truly just be present with your heart, with the air around you, with the divine. Deep breath in. Feel the room around you. Wiggle your feet, your fingers. Ten minutes. That's all that took. Ten minutes. Who doesn't have... 10 minutes every day to do something like that. And I'm not scolding you, I'm scolding me. Just so you know. Because I can come up with a litany of reasons. Well, I can't meditate before I come to work because I get up so early. And I have, I have all these things to do before I get to work and then I'm at work and I should really, first thing I should do when I come here, my intention is to meditate. But, you know, I'm going to Golden, Colorado, and I have all of these things to do, and so I better get them done because I won't have time when I get back. So see how that works for me? I can talk myself out of something that is vitally important to who I am. It is more important than giving up TV. How did I do on giving up TV? Nobody asked me this morning. I was surprised. I'd say I did 80%. It is not the first thing that we do when we go home. And later on in the evening, about 8, 8.30, it is something that we have turned on. However, that's 80% better than what we were doing before. So, And now it's to do the meditation, because this, I think, is more important. If God is talking to me always and I am busy doing life, I'm not going to hear it. Now, here's what I know to be true. There is brilliance coming down through me all the time, and if I don't answer, that brilliance, gonna, brilliance is going to be passed on to somebody else. And I have missed my opportunity. I think the first time I saw that was from, and I don't think it was John Prine, I forget who it was, it was a musician. And it was before we had cell phones. And um, he said he learned to start carrying a recorder in his car because he found he would be driving home and he'd get these fabulous lyrics. And he would say, not now, I'm in traffic. And by the time he got home, he'd forget until he heard something very similar on the radio maybe six months, seven months later. Don't miss your opportunity Meditation is more than just something you check off because somebody said it's a spiritual practice. Well, okay, so now I've meditated and now I've journaled. and It should be part of life. It should be like, wow, I woke up. Thank you, God. I brush my teeth every day. Thank you, God. And now I'm going to sit and meditate. Thank you, God. It is that important. And I can't stress it enough, and I guess I'm stressing it to myself, and I guess when I start really putting it into my life, then um, if you guys mirror me, because I mirror you, then you'll all start doing that too. And so the second piece is prayer. How many of you are new to this philosophy and don't know about affirmative prayer? Oh, yay. So you can do any kind of prayer you want to after your meditation. 
the quickest prayer you can do is thank you, God. It is a prayer. Here's something to remember that I think somewhere I missed, although knowing Susie, she told me many, many times. Everything you say is a prayer. Everything you say is a prayer. God is always listening. That divine energy that is around us, I know that makes it sound separate. That divine energy around us is always listening. And remember, the more we say something, the more it is going to turn into manifestation into our life. So I know many people have said, well, I want this in my life and it hasn't shown up. Don't blame the divine. Look at what you're thinking and look at what you don't think you're thinking. It's your subconscious mind that's going to unhook your prayers. It's those beliefs you have that are preventing you from the realization of the truth of who you are. If you want a partner, you have to be that love that will attract somebody into your life. And then you really have to do a deep dive into, if this is something I really want and it hasn't shown up in my life, where am I the block? Right? Because here's the thing. It's always working. I'll never forget when I was at a Silomar, I think it was the year I graduated, and David Bruner was the speaker. And he said, when you do a prayer and something shows up and it is not what you think you prayed for, you had better say, thank you, God. It is exactly what you prayed for. And then you better pray again if it's not what you thought you were supposed to get. So if you're pl praying for something, someone loving, and I've said this before, I want the perfect relationship. I want somebody to love me unconditionally. And you get a dog or a cat or a goat, thank you, God, because that's, that's what you are ready to receive in that moment. Right? Be a little clearer if you want a human. You might want to rethink the unconditional love when you're dealing with a human. Not that we can't do it, but we have our moments, don't we? Humans do not, I shouldn't say that like it's uh, uh, ever. I, I imagine there are some humans that do. Most of us do not love unconditionally. We try our best. However, we all have our stories. If you want something unconditional, I swear, get a dog. I don't know about cats. I think, I think they have a little relationship issues. Dogs don't. Anyway, any dog that I have ever owned never has a relationship issue. They just, they just adore you and they just want you to adore them back. So think about what you're praying about. And then, for goodness sakes, don't unhook your prayers. Does everybody know what I mean by that? Here's a good prayer. I, you know, absolutely. Let's say you sit with a practitioner after service today. They pray you up and you are rock solid. And you walk out of the building and think, yeah, that's probably never going to happen. Your prayer has now been unhooked. You have to be conscious. You have to be awake. You have to be aware. You have to listen to what you say. And if you want something bigger than what you've got right now, you can't keep doing the same thing. Because remember, that's the definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again and thinking life is going to be different. It's not. It just isn't. Life will remain the same as long as you remain the same. So if you want your life to be different, do something different. Big breath in. And I'm really excited about the next part of the service, so we're going to pray. You worried, Bernie? Ah, <laughs> uh, yes, you are. So let's close our eyes and allow ourselves to really go back to that place where you feel your body. Take that breath. And allow yourself to just feel the energy all around you. And so we call in knowing 
that the power, that presence, that one that is God, that one life that is my life, that is your life, is always present, is here right now, it doesn't go anywhere. It just sits awaiting. Maybe it stands, I don't know. But it is here always. Everything that we pray that we would like in our life is in the mind of God has already manifested and it is ours to pull that forward. To know the truth of who we are and why we're here and how we want to be in the world. And so that is what I call forth right here and right now as I know that divine essence, that thing itself that I choose to know and call God. That power, that present is joy, is love. Is you, is me, is all things everywhere in form. And I know it delights at the truth of who we are. It delights at why we're here. It delights knowing that in this moment, each one of us allows another yes to open up our heart a little bit wider. That yes that allows us to experience at a different level, a deeper level, who we are and why we're here. And so we stand in that yes together, knowing that that joy, that love, that excitement with life itself is bubbling up within us and allowing us to feel deeper into this moment with this oneness of spirit, this oneness of each other together. And so I give thanks for just feeling into and knowing my truth as I hold that truth for all of you. That yes, I am human, but I am so much more than that. I am so much bigger than what I in my conscious mind can imagine. And so I allow that deep dive to happen within me. I allow myself to crack open and to become that which God has sent me here to be and to do and to experience. That love, that joy, which is me, which is you. So I turn all of these words over knowing that as it is spoken, it is done. The universe has already said yes. And now we allow the hows to come to us easily and effortlessly as we follow that path each on our own and yet together. We turn all of this over. We let go, we let God, and together we say, and so it is. Namaste. After he was finished with all the classes, there were also testings to be completed, and he passed. Then it was finally time. He ventured into a place known as Golden, a small colony in the foothills of the Rockies, where Centers for Spiritual Living Home Office is located. With his adoring wife and wise minister friend, by his side, he prepared for the final step, paneling in front of three unknown veteran ministers. Bernie was calm and prepared. However, his adoring wife sat in the lobby and chanted, Beam me up, Scotty. I'm going to lose it. There was no need. The cadet was ready to deal with warrior Klingons and scheming Romulans who threatened to destroy the Federation of Consciousness. Sixty minutes of interrogation later, Bernie H. Campbell walked out of the room as Reverend Bernie H. Campbell. He passed with flying colors. Ministry school, it seems like the final frontier, but becoming a minister, it's a whole new world.
Live long and prosper, right? Live long and prosper. So it is said that Mary um, bathed the feet of Jesus. I love you. Not that much. So we're going to start a new tradition. And that tradition is, I am going to put your robe on you. Okay. Sorry. It's all right. We're all family here. We are. Oh. It's a tight. That's impossible. All right. I ordered blue, but gold came. There must have been a reason. Yep. Okay, hang on a minute. Talks amongst yourself while the minister with the shaky hands. Oh, I should have had glasses on. I got it, Bernie. Just relax. We're in this together, Gail. I know. Just relax. We're not done yet. I know. Okay. I'm breathing. Three right. in, three out. Three in, three out. Time to meditate. <laughs> and now I'd like to invite his adoring wife to the stage. Yep. So, by the power vested in me as the senior minister at Je Genesis, as an ordained minister with Centers for Spiritual Living, I want to first present you with your two diplomas. One is from Centers for Spiritual Living, School of Spiritual Leadership. The other one is from Holmes Institute School of Consciousness Studies. And his license? Ha ha ha. And here's what I love. He got a picture of Ernest. And if you haven't checked out a, his Facebook page yet, he actually did a fist pump with Ernie. Like right there. It was perfect. So... I, I, it's been a journey of three years and I am really blessed that I've got to walk that with you and one final picture Heather if you want to come up please so I don't know uh, in, of many centers that are our size that actually get to say they have three ministers and so Please welcome Reverend Bernie H. Campbell to the addition of Reverend Heather Venegas and Reverend Gail Dillon. Yeah. Thanks. Thank you. You can say something? If you want to. Well, I'd like to say something. <laughs> Bring the mic. I, you know, I... It's been a, a whirlwind journey. There's no question about that. And I have to, I so greatly want to acknowledge a couple people in this process. When I first came to Genesis, Teresa Varelli was the first person who came up and acknowledged me. And I know she's not here, but I want to acknowledge that. And then we had kind of a clan that we sat with. And uh, there was Dennis and Cheryl and Kim, and Kelly, and myself, and Amy came in towards the end, and Alita. And that was kind of our group that we always sat with. And then there was the great Susan Hall. I didn't even know she was Charles's mother. I just knew her as Susan. And she has been such an inspiration to, to me. And there was Bill back, uh, who befriended me as a little brother. And then there was Genesis. There was you folks. And you've welcomed me so much and so greatly. And I have a beautiful family. I have a mom and dad that are sitting out here, which I never thought I'd ever experience those kind of feelings again. 
and I can't thank them enough for allowing me to be part of their life. And as you heard, my daughter who finally, I was a five-star dad until I got my name on her birth certificate. It's just been a blessing to have her in my life. And then we got Gail, who adopted me as her little brother almost the first time that she came in here. And I'm so grateful for you, Gail, for everything, everything. And I just know that we're on this great journey. And Heather, thank you. Thank you so much for being part of all this. But the biggest thing that happened to me was being able to come to Genesis and to be able to find myself and to be able to find the love of my life. The love of my life. Someone who is willing to give to me as I am willing to give to her. Someone who has always been there for me. Now to say that it always was smooth would kind of be stretching the truth. But we always seem to work it out. And I really, really appreciate you, Courtney. I really, really appreciate you. I love you with all my heart. And for any of those who think that this philosophy is a bunch of hooey, or any of these people that think that, oh, we have to do a lot of things, I, Courtney and I stand here as proof that you, any of you, can be in love. Any of you can find the people who you love. We have Randy and Tamara over here, which is another great example. We have B and Barb, which is another example. We have Travis and George is a great example. We have Kelly and Norm. It's a great example. And I just want to thank you all. Thank you all, because you are my family. And I am here to serve for you, with you, around you. And you can always count on me, because I know I can always count on you. So I just want to say I love you all. Victory is ours.